where we have a good time. So the idea here is, when you're looking at the cleaning itself, the mechanical action is so, so important in weight cleaning. The idea is it must be very, very gentle. The other things you have also is a reduction of water, so the water level is very low. What you also notice with the, with the actual detergent itself, it's very, very bubbly. The idea of that is to actually cushion the garment. So what it doesn't do is create mechanical action and damage it. So because of that reason, you get the softness of the textiles in its terms. How you change it as well is you can notice the rotation of the drum is only a three seconds. So it's a one and a half turn of the drum itself. So it does in its terms give you features. What we've got here is you would not do it by hand. All the products are automatically injected by using a uh, auto-dosing pump system, which we set up. All the programs are set up by ourselves as well. These are trialed and tested programs. What you'll notice on the screen as well is a number of textiles time spotting the garment out. Here, the great thing you can, pardon, imagine this is a spotting table, so what you can physically do is have the product and slap spot the garments on it. It doesn't make a difference. Leaving it wet is not a problem because we're going to put it into a wet cleaning system. So by doing that, what you have now is a protective garment, like Pauline said, it protects the fibres. So it stops the actual fibre from shrinkage, distortion, like you sometimes get on your silks or your woolen garments where they come out of, action, um, out of shape, that's what you do. The second product, Profit Body, protects it. As uh, Pauline said, it is a sizing agent, so it gives it body. That becomes the important part of it. The drying is very, very important. How you actually bring the actual mechanical action in terms of which way it turns, how much air is brought into it, and also the important thing is the amount of temperature you're allowing the actual moisture to be set onto it. Because if you look at the garments you're wearing, they're all wet. What I mean by that is, there is a certain percentage of moisture in there. If you didn't have that, the garments would be very stiff and you'd be walking around. A typical example is imagine in the summer, if you look at plants, the leaves are very flexible. Come in the winter and you do the same thing, they will crack. So if you over dry something, like a shirt or a, 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 a linen item, it will crease up, it will crack and therefore you damage the garment totally. This is why the importance of having the right chemicals, the right system of programs that you have, and the way the process of the work is, gives you those answers what you need. The other aspect you see is the softness of the textiles, how easy it then becomes to press it. Mani, can you just do that jacket for me? So the important, the other side of it is, the illusions where you have before, where you, everyone says in dry cleaning, ah, oh, yes, we can wet clean. I'm a dry cleaner as well. I've been doing it for many years. When I had problems with it, I dunk it in a bucket of water, hang it to dry, then throw it in the dry cleaning machine to dry clean it. When it becomes soft, I press it and go, yes. But when you are doing this many, you cannot do that. This is why a system like this brings it into place. The Onera group, in the case, has perfect programs that we can set up, as well as the drying side of it. So having a combination of this does the factor to you. There are times when people say, you don't need a jacket former because you know what? You can do everything on here. But the trouble is, you have many areas where the garment is too creased and you can't finish it properly. Sorry. But the fact at the end of the day is, it's important to have a jacket former. And the reason why also is to put in the plate as the right place. So when you look at the sleever, if the sleeve is too high up, then what happens, it creases it up here and the product doesn't sit properly. So when you actually put the garment correctly, you can see there is nothing to do. This can go straight on a hanger, a little bit of steam, and it will do for you. But if you're a very good quality cleaners that you want, if I could just pass that round, you can see quite clearly how soft it is. Can we do another one, please? How soft the garment is in the terms of the results that you get. Also, if you smell the garment, what you have is, is a very clean, clinical freshness to the garment. This is important because that's what we've actually produced into here. So by doing it in that format means things like perspiration in dry cleaning, you cannot take out. 
if you look at things where you add, obviously you have to add products to do it. Here, it's a clinical idea to take it out. So if you think at home, a lot of the garments you wear that are close to your body will have that same aspect. You have the smell of your body, which is BO. Water will take that out for you in that terms. So you can see quite clearly there is a high foaming. The idea of the high foaming is to allow the actual garments not to bang. So it's like sending something away. It's bubble wrap or wraps around it to hold it in its form. It's a very slow extraction, but walls can go right up to a high extraction. So what you're doing is you allow the water to come out. When you are doing silks or viscous or rayons, that level is brought right down. So what you're not doing is is cracking it or creating grease marks in it. So again, it saves you all those aspectations to do things. So if you look at pressing just in a normal format, a jacket which you would put through is set down in a normal way. By bringing that jacket up, what you're trying to achieve is make sure everything's set properly. This is where the beauty comes in. You have one format that allows you to vacuum down, another one to bring it up to allow you to see quite clearly that it will give you a foam factor. There are reasons why you do that very easily. By bringing the, the jacket in its format, you notice quite clearly that what you want is heavy surface areas. You want to make sure you have a perfect glide. So it does it as a perfect press to it. And by just simply turning the edges to it, if you bring that jacket across, you create a roll effect so the garment sits with the jacket in that way. Rather than some people do, is to press it down and what you end up with a crease mark. When you press with it, the important thing that comes out of it as well, now you use the blower feature, the iron can sit and just gently you can press it. You don't have to press hard on it because most of the creases are out for you. So by gently doing it, you can see quite clearly it's an easy process. And the easy process then becomes that the iron does the work for you, not you. So you want to make life easy for you having the right kit to do the job for you. The important thing comes in is work your way down so what you get is a pure crease at the bottom of the garment, so it looks exactly the same as a jacket where you were doing dry cleaning. Bring that across through, you can see quite clearly also that easily the jacket can be pressed through. So I just do that there. What I like, rather than having a blow where you take the crease out, what you do is, is bring that crease into a sharp format use the vacuum base to the bottom, press it through, so what you end up with is a pure crease in the front. So when that sits on a hanger, you can see the difference between one side and the other, where this one has its perfect rounded shape, which is called round collar, and on the other side, obviously unfinished. But if that's presented in a jacket, you can see one to the other. Because you've used the jacket machine, there's nothing to do on the sleeve side, so it finishes it off very well. If you look at it a trouser format, we've got trousers there, look on here as well, you can see also there's very little finishing to do in everything you do. So basically if you're doing trousers, you do it in the same format. Bring the trousers to the edge, do the pockets first, which is a normal format, all the way around to what you need to do. Turn it around in its pocket format. So what you've now got is a typical thing you would do on a Hoffman press where you would go one side, steam it up, pull it over, steam it, steam it, and what happens then is you don't finish it. So if you've got problems with the pocket side as well, do the same thing here, is bring the pocket across, use it so these belts sit perfectly flat. So you can see the difference between the two. So bring that across there, turn it in through, and trousers, when you look at it, which way do you want? You want the most important thing is the line. The line should sit between your big toe and your little toe. So what happens is the trousers in a straight line. If you turn it to one side, what you'll end up doing is, is not the crease. So always look at the trousers from the front end side. So what you do is look at it there. If you look at sometimes one of the biggest problems in the old way of wet cleaning, you would have puckering all the way there. You'd have the same thing on the other side. Normally when you would Hoffman press these, and you bring the trousers in line, you drop it through. When you press that down, you end up with the impression mark there. So what you get in this type of pressing is not that in any way. So the first thing you'd look at is again, sorry, I'll just show you from the beginning, is to bring the trousers in line, follow the lines where they are. That's the true line. 
So when you drop that onto here, again the same thing, you're not looking at anything to touch. From here, turn the trousers over. The blow is not going to do the job for you, you need the vacuum. Watch where your body is. If you're in this line here, then you're going to have to go across you. So what you want to make sure is the line is here. So what you are doing is, you're in the line of the pocket. Make sure the pocket is taken out. And again, in the same way what you're looking at pressing, is take the line from here. The steam is only here, it's not here. So there is no point trying to use the whole iron to press it. So what you've got to look at is how the iron works for you rather than what the iron is supposed to do. So all you need here is just the edge of the iron all the way to the top. One line, straight down again, and you've got a crease. All you do from there then is bring the trousers and turn it this way, and turn it round. Those of you who are Hoffman pressers, you'll notice that I'm using it just the way a Hoffman press would be. But the iron is designed in a different way. It's designed, if you look at the top half, is your waist. If you look at the bottom half, it's the hem of your trousers. So when you do a trousers, it should really be that way. So what you have then is no movement, everything is in its line properly. So the same format you do is from here, look at where the trousers are. Doesn't matter which way you do it, if you want to do the whole leg and take the trousers out this way, you can do it in that format. Vacuum it down where you need to do, so the trousers sit there. Bring the line in order from where it is and press down. And again, you notice there is no pressure that I'm doing. A lot of the action is done by the vacuum to take the air out. A lot of people do this. And what happens then is you don't get a true line on the actual press itself. And that becomes important because you need to make sure it's just a simple crease to take it through. From here, because you're not going to move the trousers, is here. What you need to do important is look where the finish is. That becomes important. So when you take the trousers and drag it, you need to make sure the line on the back of the trousers sits where it is, push it down where it should be. And then now the trouser sits in its format. If someone can say to me that's not as good as a hot press, I will find it very, very difficult. You can see quite clearly that it's very sharp. So therefore you can use the trouser in its format. It's again, if I can have a hand for it. Which way you lay your trousers. So hide the finger and you have the ticket that's here, you can see it. If the trousers was this way, you have to then make the difficulty of the garment where it is. So importantly, you can see the finish of that, I would say, is no different to doing it on a dry cleaning way or a hot and press. If you feel that now, please, if you can have a look, you can see there is no differences in the terms. What you're